All right, go ahead, get it out of your system, react to the title, right? You'll want to bet in the comments below, but it's true. You may not currently be good at art, but this video is about changing not only the way that you view your own abilities, but how you learn new ones. Usually the videos that I make on this channel are a mix of indirect sources in a combination with some of my own experience. But today we're pulling directly from a fantastic article from 2012. It's one that I'll link in the description below and I highly recommend you read it yourself after this video called Errors Versus Bugs and The End of Stupidity by Celandine13. Now there's a lot of things being talked about in here, including things like programming, practicing music, and math. But don't let that throw you off. Think about how any kind of creative learning or creative pursuit has parallels to drawing and art. I'm going to pull pieces from here and there in the article, and it starts out by saying, a pianist has to believe in telekinesis. You have to believe you have the power to move your fingers with your mind. Pretty intriguing start. She goes on to describe the piano lessons that she had with one teacher. I wasn't an exceptional pianist, and when I'd play my nocturne for him, there would be a few clinkers. I apologized. I was embarrassed to be wasting his time. But he never seemed to judge me for my mistakes. Instead, he'd try to fix them with me, repeating a three-note phrase differently each time, trying to get me to unlearn a hand position or habitual movement pattern that was systematically sending my fingers to wrong notes. I had never thought about wrong notes that way. I thought that wrong notes came from being bad at piano or not practicing hard enough. And if you practiced harder, the clinkers would go away. But that's a myth. In fact, wrong notes always have a cause, an immediate physical cause. Just before you play a wrong note, your fingers were in a position that made that wrong note inevitable. Fixing wrong notes isn't about practicing harder, but about trying to unlink those systematically error-causing fingerings and hand motions. I'd say this holds true for art as well. Practicing for 10,000 hours or even 10 years isn't that useful if you're using the same limited information, if you're unwilling to improve, you have a lack of feedback or awareness, or if you're executing the same way over and over. She goes on to describe the way that we view errors in terms of musical performance or in test taking, and it's all about how many mistakes or errors you make. And in this model or way of thinking, Improvement is a matter of lowering your error rate. This, or something like it, is the model that underlies school grades and test scores. Your grade is based on the percent you get correct. Your performance is defined by a single, continuous parameter, your accuracy. And a lot of times that's the way that we think, and it goes back to the way of thinking where if I just put more time in, if I just keep starting over from zero on this piece of art, I'll eventually iron out whatever problems it is that I keep having. Next, though, she describes not errors, but bugs, as in a glitch in programming, or for our purposes, a gap in understanding. A person taking a test or playing a piece of music is executing a program, a deterministic procedure. If your program has a bug, then you'll get a whole class of problems wrong consistently. A bug gets everything that it affects wrong. And fixing bugs doesn't improve your performance in a continuous fashion. You can fix a little bug and immediately go from getting everything wrong to everything right. And this tracks in art, especially if you're drawing the same things over and over, relying on muscle memory instead of being intentional with your work. This next part of the article is my favorite part, and I appreciate you sticking with me this far. Often I think mistakes are more like bugs than errors. My clinkers weren't random. They were in specific places, because I had suboptimal hand positions in those places. A kid who gets arithmetic questions wrong usually isn't getting them wrong at random. There's something missing in their understanding, like not getting the difference between multiplication and addition. Working generically harder, quote unquote, doesn't fix bugs, though fixing bugs does require work. Once you start to think of mistakes as deterministic rather than random, as caused by bugs, incorrect understanding, or incorrect procedures. Rather than random inaccuracy, a curious thing happens. You stop thinking of people as stupid. Tags like stupid, bad at, sloppy, and so on are ways of saying you're performing badly and I don't know why, or I'm performing badly and I don't know why. Once you move it to you're performing badly because you have the wrong hand position, or you're performing badly because you don't understand what a limit is. A limit is something from calculus, apparently. 
It's no longer a vague personal failing, but a casual necessity. Anyone who never understood limits will flunk calculus. It's not you, it's the bug. Now I agree with that, especially because I don't know the first thing about calculus. But isn't that amazing? What a great way to reframe the way that you view your own work. And not to like pat myself on the back here or be self-aggrandizing, but there's been a few times where I make uh, personal video critiques for someone over on Patreon, and it's weird, like it's, it's almost like they're surprised that I didn't make fun of their work and instead was respectful of it and gave them proactive solutions to work toward. And this is why, not only have I been there before, but I don't think that you should be punished for not knowing something. Now, to put this in terms of video games, which at least for me would make it easier to understand, if two people who were at the same exact skill level went up against each other, it would come down to what mistakes they made. One didn't read a situation correctly, or they pressed the wrong button at the wrong time, and that's an error. But that situation almost never happens. Instead, it usually comes down to which player has more experience and awareness. One of them has less gaps in their understanding. This is probably easier for us to understand in this one verse one situation, but when it comes to measuring our own art skills, it's so easy to go, ugh, they're so much better than me. They're so talented, I'm so bad. But that's not true, you're not bad. They just have more awareness, practice, and experience than you do. And the good news is you simply need to put in the same amount to get where they are. If you win in Mario Kart against someone who started the race going, wait, which button is go again? you hopefully understand that beating them as someone who does know which button is go is not that much of an accomplishment. You have more experience, awareness, and practice than them. And this is true at any skill level. Instead of thinking, oh, woe is me, I'll never get better, you can instead think, okay, what's the next step? Now the next step for me is getting out of here because it just started raining. Who would have thought woods the sequel would also mean wet leaves the sequel? How did I get here? <laughs> oh, the rain stopped, and I know where I am. Story arc over. So what takeaways can you get from this and practically put into your own artwork or any creative skills? Well, first of all, you're not bad at art. You just have a lot to learn. What's the difference there? Well, it takes you away from feeling like you're past to the point of improvement and a lost cause, and instead realizing you're at the early steps of a long journey. And hopefully that helps relieve some of the pressure that you put on yourself to be better. The second thing is a new spin on the old phrase, work smarter, not harder. Now, I do think that if someone rests on their laurels, so to speak, and doesn't seek to actively improve their work to seek out and destroy those bugs in their programming, they're just drawing at the same level for hours and hours on autopilot without any kind of awareness, they aren't going to get better. Instead though, look for the problems that keep coming up in your work and see them not as a random mistake that keeps happening, but as a gap in your understanding or execution. Oftentimes it goes back to an art fundamental that needs work. So take pause, isolate that problem, and work only on that problem for a while in order to improve. For example, for me, I've spent a lot of time in the last few years getting better at my construction and rendering of forms in my work, basically the accuracy. But I was seriously neglecting the energy, the expression, and motion. And this is because I was both not aware of it, and my process was one where I was too quickly jumping to making the correct volumes, the correct lines. And I left out the part where I explore the poses, the overall shapes and flow of the character, the expression, what can I do to make the drawing exciting instead of just the design. And so focusing only on that step for the last few weeks since I finished Parcel is already starting to pay off, and I'm really excited about that. The third thing is to go outside of your comfort zone and seek feedback. Now, I personally offer personalized video critiques over on Patreon at the Novice Bard tier, and I also have the Learn Character Design course, which I'm actively rebuilding right now. But even if neither of those interest you, find some way to get feedback on your work, or find work that you admire and contrast your work to that work. Ultimately, I hope that this video has benefited you and helped you to be more proactive, to find the specific things that you need to work on and attack them head on. And in the meantime, not feel so bad or down about yourself with all of the self-inflicted pain that comes with the frustration of improving your work, because ultimately, a lot of that frustration usually leads to better work. 
If this video has helped you, please give it a like, and please share it with someone else who you think it would also benefit. Special thanks to my mom, whose hands you were watching earlier, not just for shooting that b-roll, but for filling the house with beautiful music every time she sat down at the piano. And I guess for like life and everything else too, you know. I'm making new videos every week here on YouTube, so subscribe. My Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon are all Bagel Denizen, and you'll see them in a few seconds. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating.